Yeah, so let's, let's transition into a time of tropics, shall we? Let's track the tropics, and because uh, I know it's hot on everybody's mind. We do have a big area uh, that we need to be watching, a massive area of potential development, frankly, from the National Hurricane Center. Over the next seven days, we do have that 80% chance of development, so pretty confident that we are yeah. going to get something out of this. And uh, like you said, a pretty wide berth of an area. Correct. Yeah, this is not one of those tight uh, uh, blobs, so to speak. This is a pretty big area where the potential for development occurs. Uh, what would be better for us is, you know, and when I mention us, whether, wherever you're watching from, I mean, uh, first coast of Florida, southeast Georgia. Uh, qu generally speaking, quicker development equals uh, a, a more likelihood of a, a quicker northern turn, mm -hmm. right? So that's kind of what we want to watch in modeling. How fast does this thing develop? Does it fizzle a little bit and re-strengthen? Does it, does it you know, kind of hold its ground as a tropical depression and, and a weak storm as it approaches the uh, lesser Antilles? Then you, you kind of you, you watch for the more southern western track. But uh, it's something we've got to keep our eye on here over the, uh, the next uh, seven to 10 days, as there is your uh, good image of a disorganized, uh, but trying to get a sack together in more conducive environment, uh, tropical wave. And if we did happen to get something, next yep. name up on the list, Gabrielle. Gabrielle. All um, right. Timing wise, I, I, it does look like, you know, at least by the weekend, let's say. Yeah. We could probably have at least a tropical depression. Yep. Um, beyond that, could we see a tropical storm by the upcoming weekend? I think it's possible. Is it definitely going to happen? Not necessarily, but, um, you know, I think the ingredients are, you know, pretty conducive for it. This is looking at the sea surface temperatures, right? So where that cluster uh, of disorganized showers and thunderstorms were at, it's moving into an area where sea surface temperatures are at least 80 degrees or higher. The um, contours on there are water temperatures or sea surface temperatures at or above 80 degrees. So the further west this thing tracks, uh, it's going to move into a, a much more conducive environment, especially when you're talking just about the heat uh, and energy available to it to grow and strengthen, especially vertically. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't really toss in, this is going to show the deep water um, energy and the ocean yep. heat content. Yep. It's kind of a similar story. I didn't toss in the Saharan dust or really the dry air because I feel like, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, by the time you get to this point in the season, yep. I feel like that, even if that is in place, yeah, it's it's not going to matter that much. The water's so warm. That's what we watch early season. Yeah, you really watch it early season, and it did play an impact in our in our early season for sure. But uh, you know, you you watch what you want to watch for over the whole Atlantic Basin is the trend of uh, sinking air in general. So obviously, hurricane does not like sinking air, uh, it wants more uplift uh, to, to, to breathe, to get its act together. And we do have a trend of, you know, lately having, so what that's what a, a high pressure does. You get that sinking air, it kind of fights it a, a little bit. Uh, also steering, but we'll watch, you know, uh, maybe that it kind of slows development, you know, and why it kind of uh, meanders and lingers as a, a depression and or storm. So I'm, yeah, less interested in the, um, and necessarily the Saharan air layer, and more interested in, in if, is that sinking air present? But you know, you get more uh, uplift in that in that Atlantic basin, and that is kind of been the trend, at least longer range modeling, seven to ten days out. So we need to kind of watch, or even beyond seven to ten days, I should say, um, kind of watch for that with future kind of mid, to, Africa. mid yeah. to back half of September. Yep, yep, and that's kind of the the, the climatological movement. Uh, but with the this modeling. Which is this, the European? Yep. So this would be a uh, Lesser Antilles. Uh, you can, you, you, if you look at the wind barbs and kind of that that dent in the orange to lighter orange south of the Bermuda High, Lesser Antilles, that would be where your low would be. Bermuda High retrograding a, a little bit further east is our friend, you know, with steering, but um, but it, it will allow uh, a little bit further strengthening from that point on if you know it's not torn up in Hispaniola, San Juan, or Puerto Rico, and then the mountains of Hispaniola. So then it kind of becomes a Plinko game. And anytime these storms interact with Hispaniola uh, uh, and, and those mountain ranges, you just kind of, you got to stay on guard. You know, you got to stay, you kind of kind of watch what does that do to any, you know, center of circulation if one is developed by them. And then, of course, you got the fronts coming down as well. Yep. If, if it were, you know, happen to regain its strength and continue on. So this is just going to look at the model comparison. We show these a lot, right? American GFS, the European there, the yellow. Uh, you're looking for those circles, right? Mm -hmm. So this is next Monday, mm -hmm. you know, fairly similar spot 
with regards to both of these. We played out Tuesday, Wednesday. Yep. Having trouble. Yep. Still having trouble running into bathwater now. And uh, GFS with that, you know, which makes sense, with a little bit further uh, north, you know, you're staying over the warm water. You're not interacting with the islands. Uh, and that would be a strengthening, quicker turning um, situation. North, yeah, turning north faster. Turning north faster. Uh, now, Euro, as we showed you in that previous one, if, if this were to hold and it's interacting with us, so watch that. Like, as, watch it together, be meteorologists with us. And as we kind of uh, look ahead through, you know, uh, next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, we'll, we'll watch and see how, if that land interaction is actually happening or not. And that could influence whether uh, this is a more uh, southern western track or, or more northern term. So a lot to happen and, and, a, and a, lot to, a lot to watch. And we are here. I love finding that map at the mall. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, like where am I? Where, where is the uh, Dick's Sporting Goods? Uh, and, okay, it's over to the right. So there we are. And up and there at the peak is peak hurricane season September 10th. But just because we get beyond the peak, don't let your guard down then either because so many of our storms really do occur uh, between, you know, late August and into uh, October, the, the end of we September. We had Helene and so. Milton both after the peak Correct. of hurricane season last year. So have to, have to know what, and what was a fairly quiet start to a hurricane season last year and then really ramped up. 